Carnival. Carne Vale. Farewell to the flesh. My history with our local carnival is, um, it's something I enjoyed doing as a high school student, <coughs> college student. It was always held the, uh, the end of May going into the first weekend in June, so it was a, a good signifier of the beginning of summer, particularly in my college years when uh, it was usually starting up right as I got home from school. As I got older, my friends started to peel off one by one the lure of the bar and the club scene, luring them away from Carnival. But as I got older, um, when you have a when you have children, it's like a return to childhood for yourself, and you get to redo all the things you enjoyed doing when you were younger, but you're seeing them through brand new eyes. So in about 2011, 2012, when Tuttle's son came of age, I started taking him to our local carnival. And it was fun for a long time. Uh, 2019 was the uh, the last year we went. Of course, we had a pandemic that interrupted things, but from 2021, Tuttle's son was, uh, to his way of thinking, he'd outgrown the carnival. And so the question becomes, do you go by yourself, or do you just eliminate the tradition and I found someone new to go with me 2020 2021 2022 and then this year and that was Pete Samiti and Alterna Comics I went a couple years ago with uh, all four issues. I think it was a four-issue limited series of the chair out to the Carnival. And I got my Italian dog and my fries with vinegar, funnel cake, and I sat and I read... Pretty gripping, morbid, macabre tale from Pete Samini, the chair. And then I remember I went out last year, um, and all I had on me were a couple issues of, uh, it came out on a Wednesday, which is uh, Alterna's anthology book. But this year I went out with a very dark, dusky twilight, that point, kind of like the, uh, the beginning of the old Tales of the Dark Side show, where it's just purpley and, uh, kind of otherworldly, the, 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 the light coming off the sky, and I had with me my box set, of Pete Samiti's King Cryptid. And as it got darker and darker, I got more and more involved in the idea of this beast who lives in the woods. The thing that's so alluring or enchanting about the woods, I think, is that the woods are close by. It's not an exotic climate. You're not going to Egypt for some, you know, revival of some mummy. You're not going to some gothic castle 
you know, for Dr. Frankenstein to bring his monster to life. The woods are right next door. And so the idea that there are things in the woods gives us the idea that we could, at any given moment, take a slightly wrong turn and be in a world where the rules of logic go out the window. One of my favorite, this is going to be a really um, big leap here, but one of my favorite John Waters movies is Desperate Living. And what I liked about it was the main character lives in suburbia, but the idea is just just down the street, just one block over, just one wrong turn, and you're in a John Waters world where... The rules of logic really don't apply. Um, in his short story, Young Goodman Brown, Nathaniel Hawthorne posed uh, a tale of a, a guy, Young Goodman Brown, who makes a wrong turn one night into the woods. And not only is changed by what he sees, but the way he looks at all of his town folk will change forever because of one wrong turn in the woods. And that's the mood that Pete Samid, he brings in King Cryptid. King Cryptid lives in a world very different from our own, but literally right next door. You could go out for a pack of Rollades one night and get a flat tire and suddenly be in King Cryptid's world. It's a haunted world. It's a world of other worldly rules and other worldly laws. And these rules and laws, Pete Smith, he doesn't um, force feed us the lore. I, 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 I've said this a million times in my video. If there's one thing that I have a gag reflex to, it's just the spoon feeding of lore. On the seventh moon of the seventh side of the... What I like about King Cryptid um, is it gives us what we need to know and no more. And we can be confident in the writer's hands that He'll tell us what we need to know when we need to know it. And he's not going to steer us astray. Or leave us hanging like that like, like that joke at the end of the killing joke. He's not going to lead us out on the flashlight beam and then turn the flashlight off. The art is uh, spectral. Um, a great deal of alternative books are in black and white or some variation of black and white and King Cryptid's no no um, exception and the black and white in King Cryptid lends to the otherworldly nature of the story we're getting you know Gene Siskel used to say I dream in black and white. Black and white is, is the, the color palette of dreams. Color is the color palette of reality. And so the black and white in King Cryptid really fits the subject matter. It was a terrific tale. I'm one for the long haul. I, I really appreciated the, uh, the box that I got. It's a very handsome carrying case and I got some I got some goodies that came along with it, um, so I'm, I'm heartened to see that uh, the next King Cryptid uh, campaign is right around the corner, because I'll be there. I'll be there ready for that next walk in the woods. This has been Tom Tuttle.